Which brings us to this, the best feature I've ever seen on any car. Welcome to the Nintendo Wii of cars. That is why I'd lease one of these over a standard corner any day of the week. Unless there was a power cut that week, obviously. It takes 28 hours to charge the big fella if you're plugging it in next to your iPhone. Electricity going into it like tomato sauce. But beyond the dynamic stuff, it's just a really well thought out vehicle. It's got a couple of really useful features. It's just really cool, I like it. Do you remember the Nintendo Wii? You know the one, first games console that people who didn't really like games consoles wanted to play. Why didn't you buy a PS3? Everyone knows that Wii's are for children and girls. But that was the true genius of the Wii, that it wrapped some really cool, progressive, innovative features into this package that made it accessible for everyone. New school meets old school. All of a sudden, homes up and down the nation were smashing it. And by it, I mean their tellies. <gasps> so that sort of mix of high technology and then charming retro twee Right? Well... Yep, welcome to the Nintendo Wii of cars. It's electric and has some really clever stuff packaged into it, but it's also a small crossover with plenty of space, an excellent warranty, five-star safety, and running costs akin to a small games console. But that's not really very cool, is it? Fundamentally. And so, Hyundai designed this. And boy, oh boy, did they design the corner. They did all the design to it. So here's the standard corner, right? A car that appears to have mood boards stuck to both ends of it. The front looks like it's got two different sets of headlamps and three grills. Same at the back. Couldn't decide which taillights to use. Use both. Even the side is all creases and bumps and that. The more you study this car, the madder it becomes. Thankfully, inside it's much, much calmer. Very sensible, in fact. Nowhere near as outlandish as the outside. In fact, it does feel a little bit like when someone in their 40s tries to dress like a teenager. So. Anyways, this isn't the standard corner, it's the electric one. And that's great for a couple of reasons, right? For the start, it looks better, much better. Electric cars don't need a grill, so all of those go the distance. Instant win. And inside, there's a cabin upgrade, mainly a whole new centre console that's set much higher and includes these cool drive select buttons. Now, the Coda Electric has only been out since 2018, but at the back end of 2020, it was actually facelifted alongside the other corners, which not only improved the looks of it, but added a digital instrument panel as standard, and also smartphone linking, so you can preheat the cabin and stuff from your front room, and nicer ambient lighting. Plus, the electric corner is just as practical as the standard ice corner. Ice corner. There's probably a joke about Mr. Whippy in there somewhere, but I'm not clever enough to make it. But it drives better, and that is why I'd lease one of these over a standard corner any day of the week. Unless there was a power cut that week, obviously. And of course, if you want to get into one of these as cost effectively as possible, lease it at Vanarama. Head to the website for the best deals, yeah? So technically, you do lose some practicality over the standard corner. You lose two litres of boot space. So what's that, half a Nintendo Wii box? Now it is worth saying that this doesn't have the biggest boot of these small crossover thingies, as you can see. That's mainly because the boot lip seems quite high, it's actually quite a shallow space. Although what that does mean is that the seats fold properly flush and it's easy to lift your shopping bags off the boot floor. Same goes for the interior space. Not the best, but you can fit five adults of a shorter persuasion and there is lots of headroom, so... No problemo. Same up here, doesn't break any boundaries. In fact, it operates well within the unwritten boundaries of the compact crossover. You know the ones, bit of storage, decent door pockets, decent glove box, couple of cup holders, two different sizes, some storage in here, there's a shelf under this raised center console as well. It's fine, you know, it's no more or less than you would expect. It's basically a moderately effective fat hatchback that most people will find easy to live with and easy to park, as per the standard corner. But the phrase, as per the standard corner, 
is not something that's designed to damn this car with faint praise at all. The opposite, in fact, because this electricity-powered Hyundai is about as easy to live with as electricity-powered cars come. You see, unusually, you get a choice of two digital powertrains, 39 kilowatt hour and 64 kilowatt hour. Those numbers reflecting the capacity of the battery and therefore the range and therefore the price. And also the upper level one gets a more powerful motor. But both charge with the same enthusiasm because they both come with 100 kilowatt charging capability. In both cases, that means it will take roughly 45 minutes to get the car from around flat to around 80%, despite the capacity difference. In fact, it only really makes a difference if you're charging your car at a whole wall box, although that's probably what you're gonna be doing most of the time. So you can see the difference here, but with both cars, you can actually specify a 10.5 kilowatt onboard charger, which does reduce the charging time significantly of both. About one and a half to two hours shorter in both cases. Incidentally, it takes 28 hours to charge the big fella if you're plugging it in next to your iPhone. Electricity going into it like tomato sauce. Heinz ketchup. Think how good it's gonna taste when it finally gets there. But it's the range itself, as in the range afforded to you, not the battery range, although that is a thing, that make this such a compelling vehicle for people who maybe aren't quite sold on the electric thing or still doing a sort of pros and cons list, still trying to work out whether it's for them. If range isn't too much of a problem, but the cost is, then there's the smaller battery one. But if you are worried about the mileage itself, then the bigger battery one should suit you just fine. What I'm trying to say quite badly is if you're worried about costs with these things, then the smaller battery one could be for you, could get you over that hurdle. But if you compare the 64's stats to other electric cars of all types, it stacks up really well. Again, quoted ranges, not real life. But if you compare the Kona here with the other cars that were mentioned before about boot spaces, you can see how well it does. The only thing that beats it is the Volkswagen ID3, and that's actually the most expensive version of the ID3 with the biggest battery. In terms of a combination of space and quality and price and choice and actual battery range, you could make a case for this being the best value electric car on sale today. Now you can get electric cars that are cheaper than this and more spacious than this. And of course, if you go to Elon's company, then you can get far more range than this as well. But as an overall package, this is... Okay, hard five, there's no need to go on about it. Bloody hell, okay. Really well equipped too. So now there are three trim levels. The bottom one only available with the smaller battery and engine. The middle one with a choice of two and the top one with only the most powerful engine and biggest battery. Is it the top, the middle or the bottom? Where do you think they should go? The top, middle or the bottom? I'd go middle, me. All corners are well spec right? But aside from giving you an engine choice, which is nice, the premium one just has a lot. This is the sort of kit list you would expect from a luxury car. Also, as an aside, I really like the blue backlighting because it's what you used to get in a Mark IV Golf. Just a bit more of that retro shizzle in the corner here. You might have noticed before that both versions have the same torque figure. No? Well, they do. And plenty of it. And that means that they both feel very similar at low speed. They both have that inertia-free sense of responsiveness that has become the hallmark of an electric car. Stick your foot down, go. Got a little surprise there. I'd forgotten how quick this thing is. <laughs> Driving it then, it's okay. It's very nice, in fact. It feels like a well put together car. It only really starts to feel a little bit on the cheap end of the spectrum at higher speeds. It gets really blustery on the motorway. But that is really only at the upper end of the sort of speeds that you will do. And it rides really well. It smooths out that thumpy characteristic that a lot of electric cars have because there is so much weight pressing down from the middle of the body, the battery that is. And the basics, all spot on. So the driving position is really good, lots of adjustment. There's loads of headroom, even when you've got a sunroof, which this car does. You really do feel like you're sat high as well. So it's very easy to judge the corners of the car. There's lots of glass, great visibility. All that basic stuff is on point. There are three levels of energy recapture and you can control them using these paddles here. And they go from zero, which is where you lift off the throttle, you'll freewheel, to three, which is kind of that one pedal driving thing. I've been thinking about this a bit recently and I really don't like one pedal driving and I think I've sussed out why it is. And it's because, as my wife put it, it's like a shuggy boat. <laughs> 
which is like a really jolly thing to say. I don't know whether that's a nationwide thing. It's one of those fairground rides, yeah, like a pirate ship. It's because in strong energy recapture mode, as soon as you lift off, the car's braking and you end up with that effect and it kind of makes you feel a bit seasick. Just don't like it. But it's good in this car that it gives you both options. However, the brake feel itself is not great. It's just got that inconsistency. It's all right when the brakes warm through a bit, but occasionally they can feel just really grabby and horrible and not natural. Not a big deal, you live with it. Now on the more dynamic stuff, it does feel very quick. This is the top powered one, but then it doesn't have any feel, right? It's got dead light steering. It does roll quite a lot during cornering. Not a great problem at town speed, but it is if you're going a bit quicker. And I know that I probably shouldn't be talking about that because that's not what this car is about. But the fact is that there are cars that do that now, electric small crossovers. You don't have to buy into a slightly lackluster dynamic experience when you buy one of these. Here's your E2008 being a perfect example of a car that does it well. But beyond the dynamic stuff, it's just a really well thought out vehicle. It's got a couple of really useful features, like how it can show you your miles per kilowatt hour on the screen. So I've been driving this for last week. I've done 200 miles and I'm getting 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And that's nice shorthand for efficiency. So you can work out how much you're paying for your electricity and then do a simple sum to figure out how much this car's costing you per mile. It does get a bit confusing if you're on a variable tariff, so you're paying less for your electricity in the evening. Imagine if they did that with petrol and diesel. Imagine if petrol and diesel cost less at night. <laughs> Nobody would ever get fuel during the day. And the infotainment, it is not the most glamorous setup you'll ever see by any means, but it works really well. There are proper shortcut buttons, there are knobs, and the screen itself is well laid out and responsive. But it's also a brilliant example of this strangely twee setup that you get in this car. So the radio screen, they've actually, oh, hang on. They've made the radio screen, if I can get onto it, yeah. They've made the radio screen look like an old radio, like it's got a panel across it. It's bizarre, but I like it. It's kind of like those VHS cases you used to get that look like old books. So the people who came to your house thought they were really clever and had an extensive collection of books rather than just a load of Sylvester Stallone films. <laughs> I like it. It's just really funny because it's in direct contrast to this bit down here, which is the gear selector. So because this is drive-by wire, there's no mechanical linkage between the gearbox and the motor, then they can use buttons. You've got park, neutral, reverse, and drive, and you press which one you want to use, and off you go. And that's dead futuristic. And then you look up and you've got this fake radio screen thing happening. But a lot of this has been very, very well considered. So on the instrument display here, the right-hand dial is showing you whether you're gaining charge or using power. Perfect example of what happens. This doubles up as your info display. So if the car wants to tell you something, for example, you're about to crash, which I wasn't, by the way, then you'll see it there. It'll change from being a dial into an information panel. So if you adjust the wiper speed, it'll show you that there. And it's got this really neat little trick where if you're in a traffic queue and then the car in front of you pulls away, it will tell you that. I mean, that might get annoying because in theory, you don't need to know that because you're using your eyes to look but it's just really cool, I liked it. And that's one of the coolest things about this car in general, that Hyundai could have just stuck with the standard cabin and put the electric drivetrain into the chassis, but instead, it's really thought about how it's gonna differentiate this car and make it feel a bit more modern and a bit more special. Which brings us to this, the best feature I've ever seen on any car. Okay, so if you hit Sound of Nature on the screen, you then get a choice of Sounds of Nature. Calm ocean waves. Rainy day. Which is especially good if it's actually raining outside. Double the fun. Warm fireplace. Snowy village. This is kind of like the thing with the design on the outside. You can have an idea, but then leave it. You don't have to do it. <laughs> Why did nobody think sounds designed to calm you down? Probably not the best thing to have in a place where you need to be very alert. Baffling, but I love it. I absolutely love that they've done it. It's proper mental. <laughs> and that's it. That's the tweet. The Hyundai Kona Electric has one axle in the future and one axle in the past. And that makes it uniquely brilliant. It has all this tech and all these really clever ideas, but it executes them in a way that's all charmingly retro and familiar and comfortable. Nintendo Wii. Just thinking, right? It would be amazing if Hyundai took all this tech and then wrapped it up in a package that had more retro future vibes.
Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, I'll review that soon. Can't wait. I'm let it there. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the notification bell. Go to Vanarama for amazing lease deals and epic customer service. Totally poggers, I'm telling you. Have a look at the other reviews and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye. We're doing great. I would like you to make yourself nice and comfortable. Oh, we've got to go. I'll get...